let me pray for you multiplied visions and spiritual experiences he can manipulate the compassion of men around you you want to fast and they say ah bah you are overdoing it even me i'm touched by your hunger and you say really and then you stop whereas the last fast was when god would have come live by faith number four this is a serious one now the fourth word of the lord to us all strive by the spirit i don't know if strife is a good word if it's not find a word that is most appropriate for you strive by the spirit to be exceptional in character and lifestyle write it down please the fourth instruction to us from god if we are going to experience extraordinary fruitfulness strive by the spirit that's why i wrote by the spirit to be exceptional on the line exceptional in character and lifestyle i wrote some things here defeat behavioral limitations defeat the grip of past failures defeat the limiting grip of culture and background on your character defeat behavioral limitations defeat the grip of past failures all of these things are like claws that hold on to you and will never allow you strive to the place of destiny as ordained by god defeat the limiting grip of culture and background on your character strive by the spirit to be exceptional in character and in lifestyle that's number four make up your mind that this year and then as always that in the name of jesus by the spirit you will be flawless in character in lifestyle in communication that your words will minister life that you will be you will be flawless your life will be at a true living epistle say amen. amen there are two bibles you always carry the first is the one in your house the second is you you will always carry two bibles you carry this and carry yourself too your life must depict a character that is worthy of emulation we don't like this but this is an instruction from god i see the way many of you are looking at me strive by the spirit my brothers and my sisters be exceptional in character we live in a society where character doesn't seem to hold so much value again but the bible says you are the light of the world you are a city set on a hill neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel that in the name of jesus your character will preach to someone to be saved are we together now if the only way to evangelize is to verbalize it then something is wrong the flawlessness of your character can make somebody say let me follow your god and if you believe that with me say amen let me just interject here be careful what society calls normal be careful what society calls normal be careful what society calls normal you must have flawless character you know in all fairness i look at some of our younger ones right now and i am surprised at the level of lawlessness disrespect dishonor and there is a programming by babylon are we together now yes i was talking to my my boys this this evening and i was teaching them i said look guys if you continue to grow like this you will be great people one day god will trust you with your own ministries and all of that you may look weak but keep striving and i was challenging them because uh, permit me to use the word their generation of young men are very proud and arrogant if they can kick you and match your feet they say i match you somebody fell in my meeting that qualifies you to be a fellow man of god 
there is a lot of pride listen let me tell you the moment acknowledging grace becomes a problem for you is a sign that your life is under attack lot of pride lot of pride many of us don't respect elders again i was teaching i think i was having a meeting with the worship team or so and then i told them something and i want to challenge you to have it is the power of creeds creed c-r-e-e-d a creed is a representation of your conviction in a format that is easy to become a stronghold in your mind we were trained as children with creeds the national pledge is a creed many christian schools had creeds some of you remember now a creed is not a tradition if done well it is a system of internalizing a conviction i was trained in the anglican seminary and we had what we call the apostles creed these are creeds that is like a statement of your conviction these things are not there again till today great corporations in the world have creeds when they have their board meetings they, they chant it sometimes it's almost like it's magical this is what we stand for this is this is that to deliver quality products in an efficient way in you know the most available time you see mature people millionaires with their ties becoming like children creeds are powerful you must have a creed that defines your life who are you you must have a creed that defines your family you must have a creed that defines your business you must have a creed that defines your ministry it doesn't have to be for public consumption who are you you want to receive jesus as your lord and personal savior can you repeat these words after me say lord jesus i declare that you are the son of god you came into the world and you died on the third day you rose again I believe in the resurrection. Holy Spirit, fill my heart now. I receive eternal life because I have been washed right now with the blood of Jesus. Thank you for saving me. I declare you are my Lord and my Savior in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for you right now that you are establishing God. You are kept in God. The God who is able to keep you from falling will sustain you. The